Welcome to Dogs of War YouTube channel. Um, today we have game three of our Game of Thrones regionals. Um, we have here me, Jesus, and Mike. Uh, also known as Tree. Yep. I'm actually on the left playing um, Martell, Kings of Summer. Uh, my restricted card of choice was the Viper's Bannerman. Uh, I am playing up against Alex Morse, who is also playing House Martell. He's playing Brotherhood Without Banners for his agenda, and his restricted card is the Prince's Plans. Uh, look at this. I've got a five-card setup. I'm That's doing pretty good, good. And this was our regionals here in Florida. Um, we had a very good turnout, 26 players. People from California and New York came all the way down. So here, I've already like I've got one of my favorite setup cards ever, Street of Silk, because it doesn't cost you a location when you oh, play yeah. it in, in um, what call it. But he's got Beric Dondarrion starting on the board. Uh, Beric can be a nightmare, but I've got plans for Beric. We'll see them in a minute. Uh, we go to first plot. Uh, I am probably doing Shores of Nysar uh, just to start the card draw because I'm running the rivers. Um, here it comes. What do we got? We got. Oh, nope, I'm going to go get a raven. Uh, wow, counting favors. I was caught off guard by counting favors. Um, it's card draw for him. That's good. Uh, we're rolling dice to see who wins the initiative here. Yeah, he makes you go first. Yep, so I go and fetch my raven. Hey, look, it was the last card in my deck. Oh, that was the top one. <laughs> now, I, am running, I think I'm running uh, three black ravens, but there was one on the bottom, so that's always nice yeah. to see. Because I want to make it summer, uh, so I can draw more cards, and I can use my Maesters of the Sun for super strong saves. Seems. So we both draw three, and then we go into the draw phase. So we're, we're both starting with huge hands. I guess it's not bad for him to give you three cards, because he's, I bet you're looking for all the attachments to go to. Yeah, he is absolutely Voltron. looking forward to Voltron up. Um, so I've got, we both have, uh, he's got 12 cards in hand, I've got 13 cards in hand on turn one. Uh, so he lays down a summer sea, and we're used to Voltron, Barrick, or Viper. Cause it's actually what I played at regionals last year. Yeah, it's uh, so Tree's very hard played against this deck, so he knows about it. He's got the knowledge. He's got the dupe. The dupe is fantastic here. Even though Barrick can't be killed, there's all kinds of bad things that can happen to him. He drops a taste for blood. So anytime I do a challenge and he loses, Barrick's gonna be claiming a power. And it gives him plus one strength. And it gives him plus one strength. He's strength. He's a strength four Tricon now. He's um, a vampire. I really <laughs> like what Alex does here. He puts out dice to make sure that everyone knows what's going on. Um, it's something I've actually started carrying dice since then, just yeah. so I can mark. Uh, Pluses and minuses, and and have actual effective strengths down. Yeah, Alex is a uh, like, like I call uh, a clean player when it comes to if you notice his attachments are on the side, so you clearly know what it is. He's not trying to hide anything. And there are devious intentions, which is going to give Barrick uh, infamy, stealth, and plus one strength for every power on him. This is going to turn Barrick into a powerhouse Ooh. if I can't deal with it. Um, that's already scary because if he pushes through, when he starts pushing through challenge, like if he wins challenges, he's gaining strength. If he loses challenges, he's gaining strength. It is just brutal. Uh, I've got five gold. Um, and trying to decide, I, uh, I've got some thinking here to do because I kind of want to deal with uh, Barrick as soon as I can. I play Planky Town Orphan. He's going to let me look at the top card and choose to play it or not. What do we see? We see Gaston oh. Gray. You know I'm going to play that. How can I not play that one? That's that's too good. Um, this card was basically um, the best method of control I had for the entire day. I've got a Summer Sea. I've got an, oh, we both had double Summer Sea on turn one. That's the fact that I can, I, I'm going to use both of mine. And I don't think he uh, I don't think he sees too many more characters. Uh, so I'm reducing by five. Doran Martell, uh, the biggest noble you can see. Yeah. I'm um, guessing Gray is based on cost, correct? Uh, Gaston, yes. Uh, so uh, Gaston Gray lets me return a noble Martell character I control to my hand during the challenges phase to return to his hand a character with the same cost or lower. Uh, so I pop it there, and there's the Red Viper. That is two five-cost nobles. Uh, it is going to be bad times for Beric Dondarrion when we get to the challenges phase. Alex, play your nightmares if you have it. <laughs> I don't know if he's I'm looking at the list. I don't see nightmares yes. on it. Oh. Um, he does have a really strong way to uh, to answer things that would target Beric. Um, so he comes in for a challenge. Uh, I bounce him with the Viper. He's going to save. 
He thinks it's strength. He thinks it's based on strength and it's based on cost. Uh -huh. So he's going to save with that one. Uh, I'm going to bounce him with Doran Martell. I've just spent 10 gold to put him off the board, but it gets rid of Devious Intentions. It gets rid of Taste of Blood yeah. and forces him to play him out again. Um, I also don't have a military icon on the board anymore, so I'm only going to be doing two challenges this turn. If I could pull Beric Dondarrion out of his hand, it'd be awesome, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I'll take putting him back in hand and getting rid of that Devious uh, Intentions any day of the week. Um, that was a strong play for, for Alex, but um, but Tree... <laughs> he need, deck, literally. He needed something to cancel or uh, or something else. But yes, Blanky Town Orphan, uh, <laughs> he earned his spot in the deck right there <laughs> that very moment. Uh, so I'm going to lose a power for uh, crossing the Ruby Ford. I'm going to get a card for uh, sh my Shores of the Nysar. Uh, I believe I don't. I think he won initiative and made me go first. I'm not entirely sure there. Oh, he's playing Rivers too. Yeah. Um, yes and no. Actually, I'm looking at his list. He's only playing Crossing the Ruby Ford for Rivers. Uh, he's got a very strong grouping of plots, though. Um, some stuff you wouldn't expect to see normally, like counting favors. Uh, I don't know if we see it or not, but he is running Summoning Season as well. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that he would be using that to get Beric Dondarrion, obviously. Uh, since he's running an agenda, he can't run Dark Wings, Dark or not Dark. That's the agenda. Um, Summoned by the Conclave. Oh. That's the card I was trying to think of. So he gets Desperate Measures. Yep. Because uh, he doesn't want Flaming Sword or any of the other things. Uh, and from me, I think I am getting... Yep, I'm getting a Lost Spearman. Oh, he has the influence. He's got two case. influence. I'm not going to play that Lost Spearman right away. Uh, if ever. Um, because the, it literally costs him nothing to put him back in my hand twice a yeah. turn. Uh, when I try to play him. So Lost Spearman is great for one gold. He would be pretty bad for three. <laughs> It's not even bad for two. No, it's 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 reasonable for yeah. two, but where he's got two influence that is otherwise not really necessary for anything. So with the desperate measures and the much and more, you're assuming he's trying to dig for something. He is. There's, There's the desperate measures. measures. He's going to look at those top five, pick one, and reveal it, and the rest are going to go to the discard pile. So he's got another, a desperate another desperate measures yeah, there if he wants much it. And more. So he's got more dig, or he could, there might actually be a card he wants there. Nope, it's nope. another desperate measures. So I can see sword and some more attachments. Uh, there's one specific card he's looking for right now, and I know he's going to find it sooner or later because yeah. he plays it out. Um, but hey, look, my lost spearman looks good now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was and a snake skin, snake skin veil, uh, ditching out Ariane and some glare covered cards. <laughs> but they're not going to matter because they're in the discard pile. Uh, so he's going to flea bottom. And spend two to play out Beric Dondarrion, uh, who should be tapped, because that's Flea Bomb. There it is. <laughs> uh, and he's got the stuff to make it right. What's, what do we get? We have Rhaegar's Harp, which gives him all of the traits. Uh, most importantly, the Sand Snake trait, uh, which puts a Snakeskin Veil on him, which makes him immune to opponent's non-plot card, card effects. effects. Uh, had he had that last turn, I'd have oh. been up the creek. Uh, I'd, you, I'd have been pushed into being a rush deck real quick, but uh, could you rush it? That's um, a lot of with that taste for blood. I'm not sure if I could. Mm. Um, so I play Samuel Tarly. I've probably got a Carrion Bird. Nope, I've got I've got my Black Raven from last turn. I'm gonna draw two from that. Uh, the reason I didn't do that last turn is because I was already draw capped from his counting favors. Uh, so now you're you're in a rush. Not really, because he doesn't have like those two attachments make him unkillable, but don't do anything make him otherwise oh, yeah. special. Uh, he's just a he's a tricon. And this turn he's knelt. <laughs> um, what I really need to play down, I just played down a military icon, so I can do all three challenges now. Um, note that I still have Doran and the Red Viper in my hand. Uh, I'm checking what Snakeskin Veil vale says. Snakeskin Veil. Vale. Yeah, I realize that my Gas and Gray is no longer going to do anything at yeah. all to Beric, but that first turn was all I needed. I think. Yeah. Getting and, rid of and Devious then, and Taste for Blood. And that's another good practice that Tree does is. Even though you played with the cards and you like, okay, Veil does X, always verify it. You I, know. I think the reason I was asking there is for my Lost Oasis as well, because I can still stealth him, but the stealth, the effect from Lost Oasis isn't going to take effect, so I'm not going to be kneeling as Beric okay. Tondarian when I stealth. Um, so military, power, intrigue. Uh, blitzing through the challenges, there goes Barristan Sell Me from the core set. Uh, he shovels back discard piles. That's fantastic when you're using stuff like yeah. Desperate Measures and much and more. Well, much and more than playing the discard pile, but Desperate Measures does. 
And just in case they find a way to get rid of all your barracks. So what are we doing here? We're doing... Valor. Valor. Uh, so I'm going to bounce my best, the character that I want to keep. So you knew, you assumed you... I had the feeling predicted. that Valor was coming. His okay. guy is unkillable. I have five guys on the board. Yeah. This is a great time for him to Valor. Um, I pick up Sam Tarly, put him back on top of the deck. Um, and then I trigger Nysar. Uh, I do things slightly out of order here. Uh, it was pointed out afterwards to me that uh, Nysar triggers after the... Um, that the card from uh, at the Palace of Sorrows goes on top after the Nysar uh, reveal and draw. But I'm going to draw that card anyway, so... It slightly changes the order of things, but since the draw yeah. phase comes right after, it doesn't have any actual effect on the game. So now I'm going to draw three because I've got uh, Kings of Summer active. Um, Man, this deck of yours draws a lot. That card, uh, cards are king. Yep. Between the Kings of Summer. Uh, Kings of Summer, the King's Roads, Roads. and then the Rivers just... Um, as a thing, post FAQ, uh, I kept the rivers, uh, even though members four don't restricted. Uh, I replaced my Viper's Bannerman with um, some of the newer characters that came out. Uh, there's the Seneschal Ricasso and Elia Sand. Uh, How's and, it and doing? Uh, Elia Sand lets me do usually lets me do an extra intrigue, especially with the Red Viper. It's just as good. Yeah. It's just it's more. So you're not missing the banner that much. Um, I am in certain matchups against the Burn matchup. It's really tough. Uh, there's Doran Martell. Uh, and Gilly. Gilly is awesome now. She's now a three strength bicon that says draw a card when she wins a challenge. Um, I don't have a military icon on the board, uh, which doesn't matter so much because I can't kill Barrack uh, with that military, but it's really for trying to push that third unopposed challenge. So, will I find a military icon? Nope, I find an Edric Dane. Uh, I like Edric actually for two reasons, uh, for three reasons. Really, he's a three-cost noble, which is noble. huge. Uh, when he enters play, um, or I'm sorry, he's got a response on him that says when an entry, uh, uh, an influence providing location enters play, kneel it. This is big against burn because they they have to wait a turn to use any of their influence. Um, and when he's killed, uh, you choose an influence providing location in play and discard it. Um, so you can get rid of their. Uh, like uh, hopefully if they've got like something that provides two influence you can get rid of that if nothing else you're just kind of setting them back a little he just does a lot for a uh, three cost character especially with Gaston Gray in play and right now with Danny being all over the place uh, for Burn he's a perfect target for Danny uh, note that when his uh, I think I missed the Summer Sea but I did get the uh, is that Tyrosh uh, the free city when I entered play I chose to kneel it because Edric is a cool guy Uh, I think you guys talking about the interaction of Lost Yeah, Oasis. this is where we talk about the interaction with Lost Oasis, and I confirmed that I'd, it doesn't do anything cool other than giving me stealth. Um, so you put a dupe on Beric. Um, Beric's pretty much the safest guy on Earth right now. <laughs> uh, there is nothing I can do against him. Uh, I don't. My deck doesn't deal with attachments. Um, it's just one of the, the weaknesses. It's a, it's a known weakness going in playing the deck, uh, and it was like kind of a calculated risk. Um <laughs> That didn't pay off in exactly one game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Prince's plans. Prince's plans. Say goodbye. Which is ironic when Doran is the one getting rid of the prince's plans because he's the prince. <laughs> oh. Uh, here comes a power challenge. Uh, double checking the word on Gilly. Drawing a card. She gains power and if it's she gains summer. power and plus two strength if it's summer, and if it's winter she is discarded. So. Um, I was very happy. Part of the reason I played Kings of Summer is because there's only one one or two decks that are really playing Winter, and most of them aren't focused so heavy um, that they're going to try to win uh, the Winter every single turn. Yeah, try to beat you. Um, the the game I lost, one of the two games I lost in the tournament involved a fight over the season, and I lost it. And it was uh, it was backbreaking for a couple of turns. Because uh -huh. I go down, like, Gilly gets discarded. I go down to drawing one card a turn. Um, one of your save mechanics that gets turned off. Yeah, the big one. Uh, so he plays Alliance, uh, which is going to say that he ignores the out-of-house gold penalties, and I'm going to play Mummer's Ford, which is going to net me two cards. So look at that. It's two. There, hey, there's that Maester of the Sun and Quentin Martell, who, uh, when he dies, nets me two power. I'm probably going to play him and try to get my opponent to do military. <laughs> Uh, 
Again, drawing three. You can see I've got a fistful of cards there. Um, I know Alex at this point is looking for some of his other attachments. He's looking for another Devious Intentions. He's looking for his other two copies of Taste of Blood. Blood. And he is just not finding them. Uh, between those and uh, any of his characters, he's not, I'm not seeing any. Like, it looks like he's playing a very character light deck. Um, but he's not. He's, we've seen discarded his Barristan Selmy. We've seen discarded his Arian Martell. Um, in his deck, he's got another. Th he's got three copies of Flea Bottom Scavenger, and that's it for characters. Holy cow! Looking at his list, he's only running three, six, eight, ten, twelve characters in the entire deck, uh, and he has seen most of them. Uh, he's seen all three bear. The only one he has not seen is any copies of Flea Bottom Scavenger. And usually Beric is enough of a beast that he can block down the challenges that matter, but uh, now when you're flooding all, the board, all he's been is unkillable. And at that point, I'm just that's exactly what I'm doing is flooding the board, um, just to try to overrun him. I know at some point he's got a uh, prince that was promised turn where he's going to defend all three challenges and then make all three challenges. Uh, and I think at this point I'm just trying to rush it out before he can get to that. Uh, so the Red Viper is not turned on here. He's only be doing his single challenge per turn, but he's got renown, so he's gonna. Um, he's going to be bumping up my, uh, Claims. my clam a little bit. Uh, and Quentin Martell's got, uh, stealth, so we'll be able to get through, looks like I'm going to be pushing through two challenges, uh, stealthing out Mr. Dondarian. Uh, there goes a... Forged by the Father. Forged by the Father, absolutely correct. Um, here comes a power challenge. I'm going to steal a power off of, uh, Barrack. Puts me to 11. I'm guessing the Red Viper's coming in for the military. So you're using your stealth on the intrigue to make keep stripping his hand. Keep stripping his hand. Um, I know I've seen he's not drawing characters. At this one, I was kind of curious to how many characters he was running, just because the only ones I've seen have been utility characters like Barris and Selmy and Ariane, and then Barrack. Because um, when I played Brotherhood, I played I played the Brotherhood characters. Yeah. Um, so it's a very different deck. It was less a little bit less Voltron and a bit more uh, towards the traditional Mar like Martell deck with Brotherhood characters in it. Um, so he picks up dominance there, and that hurts when he played. He had alliance and had just nothing to play. He's just sitting wow. on his gold, uh, and I think he's got another turn of just uh, of just sitting on gold. And it's just sometimes it just doesn't work. Uh, I'm crossing the ruby four to get rid, which get rid of his one power. Uh, he's prince with the, which was promised, uh, so he doesn't. He's not kneeling to tap or on to, uh, to attack or defend this turn. I draw a double, he calls the thinking, and an area and Martell for the claim bump. Now if you could have drawn like two tastes of blood, it would have been amazing. Well, if he had, I think, I think at this point it's, we've, we've, it's we've both agreed yeah. it's too little too late, even if he gets them. He's looking for the attachments, and they're just not, they're not even coming at this point. Um, in digging for the snakeskin veil, and uh, he had the harp the whole time. In digging for the snakeskin veil, he went by a couple of uh, attachments like Flaming Sword, um, but he never saw another taste for blood, uh, and never yeah. saw another devious intentions. And I believe he runs three of each, um, two devious intentions, uh, three tastes for bloods. That just he couldn't get like after that first turn bounce, he just couldn't get back into the game. Yeah, um, which happens with a Voltron deck like that sometimes. Yeah. If you're, it depends on draw a lot. So yeah, but um, Alex is a good, very good player. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. um, very some very untraditional picks, but like counting favors. But again, it still draws you three cards, and it completely yeah. negates all of your opponent's draw effects. Yep. Because I mean, yes, you're helping them out and guaranteeing them the three draw that turn, but you're guaranteeing yourself three draw that turn. So you're kind of it's not putting you on like it's not giving you an advantage, um, but it leaves some of their cards not doing anything. Yep. So guys, thank you for joining us. Um, see you guys in the next video.